Good afternoon. Shall we start? Well, I guess people still be coming, oh, but we can talk. Anyway, uh, welcome to the widening participation in, M in MSCA. Um, I'll be, be your host and moderator. I'm uh, Maya Mishe. I'm a current postdoctoral Marie Curie fellow at the UCL Archaeology and also chair of the Croatian chapter. Uh, so we will be talking about the widening participation and I want a lot of your participation at the end of the session. So what are the widening what does widening participation mean well um, interim evaluation of horizon 2020 has provided insight into striking discrepancies in participation between different countries for example countries such as uk has a very high participation within a Horizon 2020. This is pre-Brexit. We still don't know what will happen next. I promise I won't talk about Brexit. This is another issue. <laughs> and as you can see at the lower part of the graph are the countries that are participating within a Horizon, Horizon very low, which they are called so-called low performing countries. The gap affects excellent researchers coming from so-called low-performing countries that are still continuing to face difficulties in participating in the Horizon 2020. In the spread of so you can see here what are the widening countries. They are member state but also associated countries. So in the pro document of spread excellence and widening participation, um, document that European Commission has proposed different programs to bridge the gap, call the, calling these countries not low-performing countries, but widening countries. The MCAA supports the process of widening participation. Uh, I believe that Fernanda will say something more about it in our position paper for the Horizon Europe. Um, and to all countries within current and next Horizon Europe framework. In our panel discussion uh, we re with researchers coming from the widening countries, I myself included, uh, we'll tackle down the issues of different programs of widening participation from criteria that was used to evaluate the performance of the countries and to how they are affecting researchers from widening uh, countries. The aim of discussion is to propose a set of recommendations not only to EU policymakers and national government, but also to reach out at uh, universities in widening countries. Uh, so let me present to you all our speakers, Fernanda Baraja. Bajanka. Sorry about this. <laughs> Uh, Fernanda is the chair of the policy working group, um, which is, was awarded as the best working group uh, in the MCAA. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> um, she's also a member of Horizon 2020 advisory group for the Marie Sklodowska Curie Actions and collaborates with the Horizon 2020 New Horizon project. This is a... Uh, Responsible Research and Innovation Project, uh, aiming to develop strategies to access successful integrated of RRE into research projects. Then we have um, Radenka Krsmanovic Wiffen, a current Marie Sklodowska Kiri Fellow at the NA in Rome. Then we have Sandra Vidovic. She's from Croatia, the Agency of Mobility and EU Programs in the Department of Mobility of Researchers since 2014, as a Horizon 2020 National Contact Point for Marik Slodowska Kiri Actions. And Dalibor Drljača is a teaching and research coordinator at the Faculty of Informatics, Independent University of Banja Luka in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Am I missing something? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you will give us a talk about it. Anyway, so uh, let's start with uh, Fernanda, who will give us the uh, introduction of what widening participation means exactly. Switch. Switch. <coughs> so thank you, Maya. So uh, I was invited by Maya because I'm the chair of the policy working group, and uh, well, 
policy issues related with widening participation are interesting for us, but also because actually I'm Portuguese, so I'm coming from one of these widening countries, despite uh, as many fellows from widening countries, I left the country 10 years ago. And I'm not planning on going back because the situation is not yet what we would wish to. And I think that's what we are gonna discuss here. Or at least partially. Um, so, as Maya was saying very briefly, what are widening countries? I guess that everybody knows, uh, people that are attending the session are interested in, on it. So, these are the countries, either member states or associated countries, that actually are ranked below the average, um, majorated 70%, whatever, of the set of indicators that measure research excellence. So, these are low-performing countries, and there are some uh, issues, uh, obviously, that need to be solved. So, which are these countries? They are mainly, oh, sorry, mainly Eastern uh, European countries uh, that joined uh, after or at, in 2004. Uh, we can see in uh, blue the countries that are member, member sa states and in yellow the associated countries. And then we have the case of the Luxembourg, which is a founder member, and Portugal here, where I'm coming from, which is, we joined in uh, eight, uh, 1986 and uh, still didn't catch up with the rest of the, the European Union. So there are some issues to be solved. To try to address these problems in the widening pro uh, countries, the European Union launched a widening program. So there are several different uh, uh, activities included in this widening program, uh, twinning, teaming, era chairs, widening fellowships, which for us as uh, MSCA fellows uh, are interesting, right? An interesting development. Uh, but sometimes this is not really enough. So uh, in the MCAA next, uh, last year, we launched a statement uh, with some recommendations for the future for the FP9, recommendations to the European Commission, where we pointed out several issues that we think they are, well, important, that deserve some specific budgets. And among them, there's the, the wide participation. So these programs that were launched uh, already by the Euro European Commission, we do feel that they do work, they have positive outcomes, and they should be strengthened, continued and strengthened. So, in our statement, that is a major message. Now, why a widening fellowships program specifically? When analyzing the results of the MSCA in Horizon 2020, one of the problems that was uh, pointed out was that there's still a, a huge mobility gap across Europe, and if you look at the data, in red here in the map, you see the countries where, uh, that receive more fellows uh, through the MSCA actions than nationals of those countries that go abroad using MSCA, uh, MSCA uh, fellowships. Uh, so they have uh, uh, a negative uh, mobility flow. In blue, bluish, you have countries that have, are in the opposite situation. And if you see, it's Eastern European countries and South Europe. In these countries, you have a lot of fellows going abroad to the northern countries, and they don't receive a lot. And this is problematic and was it identified as one of the reasons also, or one of the issues related with the fact that these countries are performing low. So, Widening fellowships are expected, uh, as the whole widening program, actually, to lead to enhanced cooperation and stronger networks, including the widening countries, to boost research, uh, research and innovation, and to increase mobility uh, of researchers into widening countries. Now, they can't do miracles, 
and there are things that they can't do. And they can't change deep structural problems, and this is the reason why the widening countries perform low at the end. In the case of Portugal, for, uh, from the perspective of the fellows, what we feel strongly is that the problem is that there is no research career in Portugal. There is no such, such thing. The preca precarity is the rule. Okay? Most research is being done by researchers that are working without a contract. Okay? They are being paid uh, uh, living allowances. There's no salary, there's a living allowance. Okay. And sometimes they are quite experienced. So this is the case of most PhD students, most postdocs, and even some researchers that have PI responsibilities. This is a huge problem. Now, things tend to change. There's a positive trend, even if things go very slowly. There was a system of fixed-term contracts that was created, put in place a few years ago, that was very well received. The problem is that it's still very few contracts, and in the last call, they focused on early researchers, which could be considered fair, because there was also a program launch to incentivize hiring on permanent contracts, researchers, that actually they assure permanent needs of the public institutions, but they are being paid on these living allowances. So, that would be great. Problem is that too few researchers manage to get these kind of contracts. So, at the present moment, th there is a huge problem because the most experienced researchers, they didn't get the fixed term contracts because they were too experienced and they were not hired on permanent positions. So actually, we have now a lot of uh, PhD students and postdocs that got their fellowships, their um, grants, but their PIs didn't. So it's kind of a weird uh, thing. And I, I hope that the situation will still evolve uh, in the next few months and years. So, just final remarks before uh, then we can continue discussing it. Discussing it. Um, we do feel actually that the widening program is very useful. It is especially changing the mindset uh, of the research community in the widening countries and towards the widening countries. But the true shift in national government and especially on universities governing bodies is required, uh, a shift in attitudes is required, really, so that um, uh, the, the system evolves towards something more uh, long-term, uh, efficient, and improve the performance uh, of at least the case of Portugal. So, thank you. Thank you, Fernanda. Um, now I ask Sandra to give us an example of Croatia. What are the government doing in case of widening participation? Thank you very much, Maya. As Maya said before, my name is Sandra Vidovic and I am uh, NCP for Madis Kodoska Key Reaction in Croatia and I'm coming from the Agency for Mobility and New Programs. When I got the invitation to this panel, the first thing that I come to my mind is to represent to you what are the main obstacles for the widening country to, be, uh, to, to have the full uh, participation in Horizon 2020. So my presentation will be based on this. So uh, we as uh, Marie Curie NCPs are involved in our network project, Network Mobility Plus project. And within this project, we came uh, with a recommendation for us, the NCPs, on uh, how to tackle the widening participation or what are our role as NCPs or what we can do to increase the participation and application <coughs> of our countries 
in Horizon 2020. Uh, the first thing that we did, uh, we did the pre-study on what are the obstacles and, we, and, and what is uh, the main reason uh, why widening countries have low participation in Horizon 2020. And we come with the results, which I believe you are already familiar with. So uh, this shows that comparing to the previous framework program, FP7, and comparing it to Horizon 2020, 60% of the widening countries are lagging behind their performance in FP7. In FP7. Uh, they have average piece or show the worst performance in Malyskodovska key reactions. In Horizon 2020, the number of coordinators from the widening countries uh, is still extremely low. A share of widening countries in Maliskodowska Kiri budget in Horizon 2020 uh, decreased from the period of 2014 to 2017. From uh, EU countries 13, which are the part of the widening countries, only 3.9 countries have the total uh, MSCA funding. But from the whole widening countries, for whole 27 widening countries, we have 6.6% of the participation in Horizon um, Madiskodovska Kiri budget. So, regarding the participation of our researchers, it shows that uh, widening countries scored 15% uh, as a destination countries for the long term mobility, which means that. Uh, 85% uh, of the researchers are going to the Western uh, uh, to the Western Europe to promote their research. As you can see in this chart, they are mostly going to the to the UK, Germany, Spain, Italy, France, and Netherlands. So regarding the Croatia, we have the similar trend as the other uh, widening country. as you, uh, countries. As, as you can see, the number of the researchers, the Croatian researchers which are involved in Marie Curie actions, is basically the researchers who are going to the outgoing fellowship, uh, regardless if they are individual fellows or the ITN fellows. We have 108 Croatian researchers in Europe. But on the other hand, we have a low number, 44 foreign researchers who are doing their research in Croatia. So what are the barriers for participation in the framework programs? We, uh, we, we came uh, uh, with the two uh, main pillars of the barriers. We have the structural barriers and the organizational ones. So the structural ones are lack of national strategy or the vision of the widening countries. Uh, not appropriate level of national funding to enhance the participation in the framework programs. Lack of leading university and research organizations, which um, uh, leads to the lack of the research salary, which are very low in the widening country comparing to the Western Europe. A lack of up-to-date research infrastructure, and of course the low involvement at the European and the international level. On the other hand, uh, for the widening countries, the accessibility and the um, attractiveness of the structural funds prevailed the participation in Horizon 2020. So on the other hand, we have the organizational barriers which hinder the participation in Horizon 2020. And this is the first of all, which we uh, faced in the whole, in the all, all, all widening country, is the lack of professional and administrative support staff uh, on the research organization and university, which is basically connected to the low uh, level of professional in uh, English, the personal competence and capacity of the administrative staff to be a support to the researchers in Maliki reaction. We also have lack of funding to initiate international meetings and enhance international collaboration, which of course leads to the low success rates in the framework programs, which in, uh, this encourage the, the researchers to apply for the widening fellowships or to the uh, f fellowships in the widening country. Of course, we have, a dis uh, we have a difficulties to get into a good consortium and the uh, perception, and there is still a perception of high administrative burden in FP7, uh, in a framework programs, uh, especially in Horizon 2020, because of the lack of the professional e administrative support. Uh, our support staff still don't know the difference between FP7 and Horizon 2020, and how the rules in Horizon 2020 are much easier and much more accessible than in previous FP7. But on the other hand, uh, we have a good practice in some countries, including the Croatia. We have the national grant for the proposal preparation. 
We also have financial support for the projects with score about eight, uh, 85%, which is basically implementation of the seal of excellence. We have uh, availability of the funding for preparatory meetings, conference, and the workshops, and etc. So uh, then when we had a pre-study on the participation of the Vatnik country in Horizon 2020 and Madis creation, uh, we came up with a set of the recommendations for the NCPs. So we have the strategic and the practical recommendation. And these are basically the things that we as uh, NCP can do to improve our success rates in Horizon 2020. Uh, one of the recommendations is to initiative and to contribute to the development of the National Action Plan for the Mobility of Researchers, which basically means to tackle the mobility obstacles and to improve the, re the research landscapes in our countries. This is also uh, established closer co cooperation with other thematic NCPs, policymakers, and the FP7 Horizon 2020 related networks, such as uh, EEN, uh, EuroAccess, and of course, the Malikili Alumni Association. Uh, we can try to multiply and then centralize the NCP network so we can get in better contact with our regional university and research organization and spread the, uh, spread the information on participation in Malisko Dovska Kiri action. Of course, uh, we can increase the number of staff and the experts who are uh, responsible for implementation of Malisko Dovska Kiri action, which can help us, the NCPs, to do our work by providing more professional advice and trainings for the researchers and institutions. So on another hand, we have a practical recommendation which means the organization of the regular meetings with the management level of the research organizations to make them aware of the importance of Malisko Doska uh, key reaction and try, to, and, and try to establish connection that they can um, uh, feel that the participation in Marie key reaction can improve their uh, research organization. Uh, we can uh, organize across border uh, re regional info days and B2B meetings. Uh, we can also organize a targeted meetings and training with um, Malikili fellows and beneficiary, and this comes to the closer cooperation with us, the NCPs and the members of Malikili Alumni Association. We can also organize a dedicated trainings and workshop for the administrative staff for the research organization. And while we are organizing, we can prepare supporting materials on financial and legal implementation of the projects in our national uh, uh, languages. Of course, we can also improve our uh, presentation skills on the webinars on Maliki Reaction. And of course, the last one, but is most important for us, the NCPs, is the participation in our uh, training uh, networks, in our uh, knowledge sharing activities, such as twinnings trainings, which means that we can share our experience as a less, uh, less experienced and more experienced NCPs. So uh, let me just introduce in shortly uh, the individual fellowships and widening panel from these fellowships. Uh, the, this year, this was the first time that this panel was introduced in the working program of Malisko Doska Key Reaction. It basically means that all the individual fellowships, the projects which are applied for the standard individual fellowships, which are on the reserve list, and their host institutions in, is in the widening country, if they are not financed by the uh, uh, budget from the Malisko Doska Key Reaction, European Commission transfers this project to a widening panel and they can get so-called second chance to be financed. So this basically means that uh, this year we had additional 33 projects uh, which are financed through this uh, widening pillow of, uh, of, 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 of call for the individual, individual fellowship. But let, yes. Uh, yes, the last year's call. Oh, sorry, 2018. Yeah. No, no. But uh, regarding the, if you, you, that your, your, your remark is correct. But regarding the increasing the budget for each year, then in 2019 call, we we can uh, anticipate that there will be at least 36 or, or 30 or, or, or 37 researchers who will be financed through this uh, panel. But uh, let's say one uh, lack of this panel is that even though these projects are fi uh, are 
uh, uh, written within the Malikiri uh, program are evaluated through the Malikiri program and the grant uh, agreement of Malikiri actions will be introduced, they are still not considered as Malikiri fellows, just because of the reason that they are not financed by the Malikiri budget. So this basically means that these th uh, 33 researchers cannot become a members for Malikiri Alumni Association. So we are trying to persuade the Commission to, to have some kind of, let's say, uh, mobility for this, uh, po po possibility for these researchers to be recognized as Malikiri Fellows. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Um, and I give a word to Dalibor now. So Tell us something about the, in case of Bosnia and Herzegovina, is associated country. Thank you, Maya. Hello, everyone. As Maya already introduced me as a teaching coordinator at the university, I'm having many other heads, so I will skip that story as NCP, as a program committee member, as an ERAC member, many things. But the important thing is that I would like today to point on a couple of things that are the problems for the countries, uh, widening countries, to receive or to send the researchers out of their countries. The, fact, the, state, the facts uh, on uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina are very disappointing. In total, 28 participants from Bosnia and Herzegovina since 2014 participated in Mari Kiri actions. Mari Skodowska Kiri actions. So this is very devastating uh, data, having in mind that we have around 20,000 researchers. So it's 0.0 something researchers activated in Marie Curie actions. And Marie Sklodowska Curie also. But the one positive thing is we are progressing compared to FP7, where we had even less participation. This is mainly because I'm pushing people to do it. I'm trying to spread the word on Marie Sklodowska Curie actions as far as possible. And also to introduce them to new ways of thinking because this is the first problem that the researchers from widening countries, especially in the country like Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is still post-war country. You have to admit that fact. We are still not recovered from the previous war because we are the most affected country. And then we have certainly other problems which are more important for the state and for the others to finance than research itself. So therefore we are fighting on two ways. One is to promote our researchers, which are missing the most important thing for Marie Curie, and that, that is researchers' visibility and excellence. You cannot be excellence in one country that does not have even basic equipment. There is no excellence in such condition. So you have to create such conditions. One of the ways is to participate in these actions, to participate in researchers' infrastructure actions, and the other tools that are at disposal. But the problem with the researchers coming from our country is primarily fear of losing the position because the number of research positions are very limited. And especially at the state universities, which have secured salaries, despite the state universities having this limited number of the, of the research positions, the private universities have a lot of positions, but they are in totally different setting. They don't have salaries regularly. You are depending on the number of students in, enrolled at your university, and there is a huge competition. What is the second biggest problem? Is the so-called phenomenon of brain drain. But not only brain drain, also negative demographic. A lot of people are leaving country because they are not satisfied with the, with, with the quality of life. They are not satisfied with the environment in which they are living. So these are the everyday problems that the Bosnian researcher is facing. It's very difficult to, to do research in Bosnia where you are not recognized as a researcher. You are recognized as a teacher, as a someone who is teaching the classes at the university. Not even in the contract is not written in all universities, is not written which percentage of the research time you have to dedicate. It's only classes. So the changes have to be done in multiple ways. One is from top, from the state, to regulate better the higher education area, having in mind the good practices in Europe and around the country. And the second thing is to change the way of thinking among the researchers that they have to do research at the university, not only teaching. 
So this is very complex issue, which is very difficult to, to resolve. But from the other side, we have the problem of incoming researchers. They are not interested to come to Bosnia because First, Bosnia is still having a kind of mark on the, on the country as a not safe country. But believe me, we are safer than many countries in Europe. Especially now, after these events that happened in Brussels, in London, in other countries. So you can trust me, we are much safer than, than, than in Western Europe. And then, uh, where they shall come? Where is the advanced research equipment where they can work, make the state-of-the-art research? It's not existing. The state is investing some efforts to do it. Having the credit loans, giving to the universities to equip the universities, part, uh, paying the participation in uh, framework programs and all other issues, and even giving the grants, supporting researchers to participate in Horizon 2020. Even that. So if you just apply for Horizon 2020 grant, the state, you apply to the state and they will give you some certain amount to cover your costs, even in case you are not successful. And still we don't have good response. Because everyone is waiting for something. And waiting is the biggest problem of the all communities. If you wait for someone else to do it, you'll never find it. If you do it yourself, you will be successful. There are many examples of this. And then the third problem is, we have huge brain drain, I already said. This scientific diaspora is not giving us a helping hand. So this is another problem. I can accept that people left the country to, to find the better positions, to find better life. But why not to help to your countrymen? You don't have to leave, you don't have to come back to, to our country, but at least to help us to, to overcome the problems that are uh, problems of researchers' community in Bosnia. So, the main problem for Bosnian researchers is low visibility because they are not participating so much at the conferences, they are not publishing in the prestigious journals, so nobody sees them. There are many quality researchers in Bosnia, but they are not visible. Nobody knows for them. And what I told you, 28 in total, which means including RICE, including ITN. So this is a very small number. Very small number that we need to improve somehow. I'm having given 30 info days per year. And in the other countries you will hear from NCPs, they have only two, three info days per year. But I have 30, uh, 30 info days from every university. I go to every university to, to give the presentations and opportunities to participate, always pushing people to do it. But the problem is, in this that I mentioned, their fear of position, losing position, uh, less quality of knowledge of uh, professional language. If you go, you have to speak language well in order for someone to understand you what you're asking for. Then problems of families. The situation is that the family wants to keep in one position, not to be split because of the previous experiences and many other things. But the, also, one of the biggest problems is self-confidence. Researchers are losing self-confidence living in an environment like this in Bosnia. They are, not, uh, they are not convinced that they can do something. They treat themselves even less quality than they are because of the environment. And so, in order to, to, to be more successful, you have to consider how to create positive environment for your researchers in widening countries. This is something that can guarantee number of flows incoming and also number of flows outgoing, but those outgoing for sure to be back. Because we didn't do anything if we allow outgoing flows and not taking those people back to our universities and research centers. Then we're just contributing to the brain drain phenomena. In order to, to uh, uh, avoid this, we are strongly supporting the European Commission initiative on brain circulation. We consider also that the, the knowledge has to stay in the country. Doesn't matter what is the population, but we need to have this knowledge to educate our people, to increase the level of research, uh, the, the research papers and scientific papers published to be more visible, and we are trying to provide these funds. Unfortunately, we don't have so many funds. The community in Bosnia and Herzegovina is estimated on 4 million. This is one town in Europe. 
This is not a big community in total. So usually uh, the people from economics, they know what it means, the law on bigger figures. If you have the big figures, it's easy to collect the money, to, to create the funds for the research and to give it. But we still have some fields that are not demined. So people can kill if they go there. So we have to give the money as a priority to these kind of issues. So trying to fix all of this is very difficult task, but we are pushing the limits. We are better performing than in FP7. At the moment, we are at the average in Horizon 2020. So Horizon 2020 is 17% success rate. Bosnia and Herzegovina is having similar 17.4 success rate in overall Horizon. We didn't withdraw the money that we invested in full amount, but we withdraw already more than 60%. So I hope that until the end of the program, that there will be more strength, more interest in the research community to withdraw even more money to create these favorable conditions in order to have better research. Therefore, three of our universities already gain HR logo, which is also interesting. 14 institutions signed the declaration of, of commitment to charter and code, and three of them made this ex extra step and provided the conditions for researchers to be successful at their institution. So these are all small steps that are bringing country into the favorable position so that researchers can come and do their research work there. So we did with this and hope that there is another side of this medal is that the researchers from other countries should recognize Bosnia and Herzegovina, especially from social sciences, that Bosnia and Herzegovina is an interesting country for them to come to do the research. Maybe not the researchers from natural sciences due to the advanced equipment, missing of the advanced equipment, but at least those from social sciences, they can come to Bosnia and extend the knowledge of Bosnian partners in research and science. Thank you. Thank you, Dalibor. Um, right, okay. So the last speaker is Radenka. She will give some of her experience as someone, researcher coming from the widening countries and also associated country. So, uh, thank you. Um, uh, I will um, give my, my view of the thing and also uh, I'm um, I'm coming from Montenegro. I'm born and raised in Montenegro uh, and um, also, I worked uh, for 10 years in Serbia. Uh, and um, the, the other uh, 10 years I spent in Europe. So I have experience both in Europe and in uh, Western Balkan countries that are, that are the, at the end of the range of performance in, in uh, widening countries. And um, uh, um, Dalibor already talked a lot uh, why we are performing uh, uh, so low. So everything that applies uh, for Bosnia applies also for Montenegro, Serbia. Also, um, Sandra talked a lot about it. So I will just, I just want to, to uh, say a few things that, uh, um, uh, that we have this pronounced uh, and uh, continuous brain drain since the 1990s. So lots of people left uh, our countries and uh, uh, now we have a situation that uh, um, we don't have a um, critical mass that is needed to, for example, uh, excel in, in uh, certain fields, so, so they don't exist. Uh, for example, in Montenegro you don't have a faculty of chemistry, it doesn't exist. It is a country without the faculty of chemistry is uh, strange, but it's true. And um, and uh, um, uh, another thing I, I would like to point is that uh, the problem is the culture, the academic culture we have in, in Western Balkan that is uh, uh, very de defensive and very hierarchical. So it's, it's hard to succeed there. Even um, Dalibor, you said that you would like scientific diaspora to help. I offered my help so many times and it's, it was not accepted. So you have also to have people from the other side who will be willing to, to accept uh, the help. And um, uh, also um, another big issue uh, is um, 
uh, mobbing at work. Uh, that is very, very widespread uh, in academia. Uh, from my experience in Serbia, I can tell that it's a really major problem. And um, uh, people are not complaining because they want to keep their job. Uh, they want to have some security uh, to feed the families. And uh, they will accept everything, just keep quiet. Don't complain. And uh, the, uh, we have lots of issues of academic integrity also. Um, in the last few years, it started to be um, exposed you know, to public. So uh, newspapers are uh, um, showing several cases, big cases. Uh, and um, uh, I wanted also to tell you there is one, this uh, paper I would like you to read. It's, uh, it's published in Sociological Review last year. The author is Bilena uh, Maltsukov, and it's called uh, Network Mobbing in Higher Education Institutions and Its Consequences to the Wider Academic Community in Serbia. It's really well written and has lots of information, so it, it is scary when you uh, read something like this. Um, but it is all true. I can uh, um, tell that this is one of the reasons I, I left uh, my institutions. I was working at the Winge Institute for 10 years and I decided to leave uh, uh, in September when I started my Maria Curie Individual Fellowship. Um, so the, the problem is also that uh, because of all these uh, uh, circumstances, you have an um, apathy among researchers, so they don't want to change anything. They are very demotivated and uh, uh, there is low mobility and poor networking at uh, both at national and international level and um, yeah I think that uh, this this have to change so we uh, if we want uh, researchers from uh, from Western Balkan to participate more in uh, horizon 2020 or in widening uh, participation program um, we need to, they need to change this uh, uh, research culture and uh, it's not easy, it's, it's really a, a long uh, uh, process. Um, um, the other thing is, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know, it, it's really not attractive uh, environment for researchers to come back. So I, I tried uh, twice to come back to Montenegro and uh, uh, I always got a question like, why do you want to come here? There is no science here, no? And, uh, or, or it was suspicious, I, I was really, they were suspicious. Why somebody would come from Europe to, uh, and uh, so it is not true that researchers from scientific diaspora don't want to come. Everybody wants to come back home. It's, it's your home, no? But uh, but uh, it, it's not easy. Yeah. And uh, if we can start uh, doing something to change uh, these uh, circumstances in uh, Western Balkan countries, would be good. So, and I think that the widening uh, program can help mostly the um, uh, widening fellowship because I see it as an opportunity from people from uh, scientific diaspora to come back to their countries uh, uh, of origin. Of course, if they have appropriate host and, and willingness to, uh, to stay there. So, that's it. Uh, I want to give this a positive note, <laughs> somehow. Um, so there are a couple of uh, uh, um, universities that are, you can find it at the Net for Mobility Plus uh, website, um, the widening countries that express of interest to participating in the widening program. So what I notice here that none of our speakers, well, Sandra and Fernanda did mention it, the structural and organizational problems that we have in widening countries. And that is uh, coming not only the effort from the governments and the local ministry of science and education, but also coming from the local universities. This is nothing if the local universities are not getting involved. So these are the, the things that need to be considered is how this policy framework of widening countries can be implied within the local community, within the local universities. They need to start thinking about this. They need to start open their minds, start to be aware of this project, 
programs because I don't think that lots of them are. Uh, here at the Net for Mobility webpage, you can see that the institution coming from the widening countries express their interest in participating in this program. And as I can tell you from uh, Croatia, there are not a lot of them. <laughs> so, two or three of them. So the efforts that European Commission is putting into this program, the efforts coming from the local NPs such as Dalibor and Sandra, from the local researchers, is really nothing if the universities are not embracing this uh, policy framework. So this is just I wanted to say that there are institutions already involved in the widening uh, program and participation and um, because, uh, Fernanda, you said something very interesting and, you know, underlying the, the problem, problem is that there are no research positions in the widening countries. So, we are mostly dealing with the teaching positions and not research in, in this sense. So, um, in Croatia we have a different uh, kind of situation. We have a lot of uh, permanent positions that are acquired with the low criteria, if I say so. And uh, once you get a permanent position, nothing is stimulating you to participate in Horizon 2020 because it, uh, it, it will not reflect your career, it will not uh, in any way reflect on your wages and the living conditions, so why bother applying? So this is like opposite spectrum of what you're experiencing in Portugal, but the, the result is the same the low performance. So, uh, what do you think that it can be done? Let's go back to universities, local universities, what they need to do, in your opinion, for the widening participation? Well, I think the answer um, depends on the country you're talking about. In Croatia, which is on one side of the spectrum, Maybe you need to address it uh, in a specific way. In Portugal, well, if there are no positions, you need to create them. <laughs> it's simple. Now, of course, it's, it's easy to say. Everybody can see it. It's a problem. But how to really do it, it's another issue. Because then you get into politics and um, distribution of budget and the autonomy of the universities to hire and with what budget to hire and considering that the main uh, objective of an university is to teach, if they have some money to hire people, well, they rather prefer to hire a teacher and even if at Portuguese universities, if you teach, you need to do research, well, you, you have such a workload that research is not your top priority. So what happens is that then you need to have in your team the people that are in a precarious uh, situation to do a lot towards the, the research itself. This creates, of course, an environment of uh, very transitory um, teams the people stay for a couple of years, they don't have another living allowance or another contract. You start from zero when you form the people, they went away. So this is a common situation in a lot of places. If you really don't have a researcher career, it's even worse, of course. The structural problem is there is not enough money put on hiring people uh, to do research, to give them some... Uh, I think that in Portugal, researchers are not even asking for permanent positions, but some stability. Uh, when these uh, research contracts started, they were research contracts for five years, and you have several different categories based on that, the experience. And the hope was that this would be a, continue, a, a continuous program. Okay, you would have your five years uh, contract, you would perform well, and you would have the possibility of renewing or at least to apply and some chances of getting it, even if throughout your life you would be on contracts, but it's already better than living allowances, which is not even a salary. And it's low and you don't pay taxes, you don't have uh, any benefits as a citizen. Uh, so 
you, you, you are not paying towards your retirement. Uh, if you get unemployed, you don't have unemployment benefits because you are never employed, right? So there's all these sort of issues that creates precarity. They need to be solved. So it has to come from above, a strategy that comes really uh, sought from above. And a lot of things being changed. I think there is a question. Yeah, I, uh, I just want to, can we just uh, do the round of the questioning and then, then we'll engage the audience or we, you can start questioning right now. So, do you have a question? Yeah, I just want to know, do you have any ideas on Sorry, because of the camera is failing. So ah, pardon. If, uh, uh, we come many people here from Bulgaria. I don't want to take it like Balkan focused issue, but all you talk about, these are the problems we also suffer. Probably we all expected that what should we do to solve these problems? Uh, do you have uh, kind of uh, initiatives? Actually, I really congratulate the, this network of NCPs and this expression of interest and things like that, because this is the way we rise first uh, the popularity of uh, Maria Curie actions in our countries, attract uh, somehow applicants. Uh, so I really congratulate. And uh, I had a question to Sandra, because this is something that probably we also need to do. You mentioned you have imp implemented national grant for proposal preparation. Uh, can you give some more information? Because I, this is one of the examples I just took in my mind. What we can do, uh, excuse me, probably I interrupted, but somehow I expected to shift, not in complaining, but to shift to how we can really change. Excuse me if I interrupt. No, I, I completely agree with you. I was going to ask the same question that, you know, that we are part of the MCAA and this is the annual meeting and we are here as members. So basically, how can we help? How can we contribute? Like what are, you know, perhaps some recommendations or suggestions to us, you know, because we are here because we want to do something, right? Not only, I mean, we know what the problems are mainly, but, you know, if, if there is any, any way, pathway that you have thought of, then that will be great. Thank you. Thank you. And you're not interrupting. I just want to give the word to Sandra because she mentioned, and this is also one of my questions, that uh, Croatian Ministry of Science is starting the program that will answer your question. But Sandra has more information. Yes, thank you very much for this question, and this is one of my answers on what we can do. Uh, our Ministry of Science and Education in Croatia uh, has made a decision uh, to uh, give the additional incentives to increase the participation in, and application to Horizon 2020. Uh, these incentives include uh, small grants. It's not a big money. It's a small grants which could cover the uh, f for the researchers. Uh, it can cover them the cost for going to the conferences, to going to the preparatory meetings with the project partners, to going to the congress, and then they can uh, be in uh, in a close and. Co Co cooperation with their partners. Uh, it also uh, it's applicable to the uh, advisory services for the project implementation and the project management. And it also includes the support for the projects which needs a national funding. It's basically the uh, the internet co-fund projects and everything. And uh, for the projects that are above the thresholds in Horizon 2020, we give a small grant, which is basically two and a half thousand euros up to 5,000 euros, which the researcher, so the research organization who is coordinator of that project, which is about the thresholds, they can use this money to, uh, to, to, to cover the cost for the research. To, to cover some uh, laboratory equipment uh, experiments to finance their field work, and they can also cover the cost of the, the, the dissemination of their pro of, 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 of their uh, research, and they can also cover the cost for the open access. 
the, op the open access, the books and the magazines uh, subscriptions. And for me, this is very good incentives from our ministry and it's very popular. I think I have a colleague here from the Ministry of Science and Education and our researchers uh, really loves this opportunity, especially the ones that gives them the, the opportunity to go to the conferences and the preparatory meetings with the future project partners. On the other hand, when you ask what we can do, as Dalibor said, that we need to create a positive environment in Vatni countries. So we can also rely on you, the researchers, to spread the, your success stories in the Vatni countries. As you can see in our Net for Mobility project, also, one part of our uh, task in participation in widening uh, countries is also that we publish the Marie Curie success stories in widening countries. So these are success stories for individual fellowships, the, the ITNs, and as well as RISE. So we applaud to you and we ask you to help us for the commission and to other uh, countries to be aware of our success because we can prepare an, uh, an, an excellent projects, but sometimes we need a little push for the others to see us. So it's not only up to us, but it's also, uh, let's say it's a collaborative work of all of us. Thank you. Sorry, I will just interrupt briefly to continue on this question. So in Bosnia, we are also giving such, such kind of incentives for the researchers to participate in Horizon 2020, as I mentioned. These are small grants also, 10, maximum 10,000 euros. So it's a maximum it's amount. <laughs> yes, to yours. But we are giving even such big amounts and paying the entrance fee for the Horizon 2020 and still trying to provoke this participation of the, of the researchers. But researchers has to come from their self. They, they are supposed to start the initiative. So what is the most important issue is to create demand for research. If you don't have demand for research, research is not existing. And in Bosnia it's very difficult because our industry is devastated. We don't have huge industrial capacities to create the demand. Because research for research, research per se, nobody is going to finance. Only if someone has the interest, then the research is going to be funded. Otherwise, the problem will be even bigger. So the three words, the three key words for creating of this demand are the stability, creating of success, also favorable conditions for researchers, and enhancing cooperation. How? Let's each of us from each country imagine how, because each country is different. But I will just point on this cooperation. Widening fellowships does not forbid that researcher from one widening country is going to another one. And that is the easiest way for our researchers to go to neighboring countries and to start the research work. And that is the fact. So if we don't exploit this possibility, then we are not going to manage. So we need to bring ourselves together, first as researchers, to say we need to create demand for research, I have to do something that is exploitable for the community, and then the community will invest the money. Otherwise, if we stick to the, some, uh, some research which is not interested for the market, you will not get the funded. So that is the only point. Thank you. Um, I have to say that I find this uh, panel very confusing. Uh, 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 I don't know if I'm confused by it or the, it something is kind of um, lost in translation. And uh, you said at the beginning that this panel is about widening countries and trying to find policies. By the way, I think that this uh, notion of widening countries is terrible just, but that's me. So if we talk about policies, policies to whom? It is not clear from this panel is this, uh, are we talking about policies that should uh, uh, benefit the EU, the widening countries, the research communities, researchers, and for each one of those actors, we should write completely different policies. Because of course, as you said, if we want to have researchers coming from those uh, poor quasi-democratic countries, they, to, you know, it is not very difficult to find a way, you know, to, uh, 
make them interested because they can see in that like their card to go abroad and to stay there. They will not come back. You know that. You all know that. That's the, that's the story. So is this the outcome you want? I don't know. Wait, is, the, is, the, is it you want to, I mean, all these uh, structural issues, cultural issues, political issues, corruption, you can, I mean, there is no way that this organization can I mean, tackle that problem even. So it is not clear for me, what are we talking about here? Is it, are we talking about at the level at the EU, that for them it's better to have, you know, uh, great researchers coming from those countries to the EU because it is beneficial for them? Or is it because it is good for the EU to have like a good research communities outside? It is just not clear what we are talking about. So let me clarify you. The widening countries is the term that European Commission has. So this panel didn't come up with this term. Okay. Uh, as you said, the European Commission has a strategic document. So this is a policy framework coming from European Commission towards the widening countries. So we are not talking to the European Commission, we are talking how these documents can be implemented in the widening countries. Okay, to benefit researchers coming in the widening countries, not to go abroad, to gain, to to let them inform. Oh, please do tell me how. I okay. I can give you some examples. <laughs> okay. No, uh, now seriously, I don't mean to be sarcastic or ironic, and, but because I understand those problems really they are deep and they're <laughs> very deep. Uh, let's say. If we, I think you suggested something that I find very important. Uh, those people, if there is something that is extraordinary with those uh, widening countries, is that they have very strong diasporas. That is the outcome of that, very strong research diasporas. They are not connected, and I think they should not be connected because they're coming from, I don't know, Montenegro or Albania or wherever. They should be connected as people, researchers are connected through their disciplines. And through their disciplines, I, I think, let's say if you have a, a chemistry scientist across Europe, Marie Curie's chemistry scientist, they can have their own kind of, I don't know, you can call it chapter or whatever. And then part of their uh, public engagement that can be structured within the Marie Curie Fellowship could be something that is like mentorship of people who are interested in applying for Marie Curie from countries, you know, chemists who want to apply from countries such as Montenegro, Serbia, whatever. So you can establish all kinds of frameworks that are much more effective if that's the if, if that's the, the, the result we want to get, if the result is to get more people applying for those fellowships, and not only that, I, I suggest also getting those fellowships because applying is an easier part than getting it. I think the, the ways to do it, that will not change many of those uh, structural uh, issues that you suggested, but if that's, I mean, there, there are simple solutions to that, I would suggest. So I don't know, I don't know, you can take notes. But, <laughs> Thank you for your input. As you may say, the, the, there are different programs within the widening participation. So I don't want to be one-on-one -on -one discussion. So I will give the word to Fernanda. Okay, since you were talking about the MCAA and what we can do at the MCAA, well, we are doing a lot. We put in our um, statement on the FP9 a specific issue on uh, supporting the widening programs, we are making on our side, let's say, the pressure at least as much as we can to keep and improve these strategies, which we think are really important and, and they are much bigger than what we can do ourselves. Now, at the level of the MCAA internally, we have chapters, national chapters, and we have a chapter, for example, for Spain and Portugal, okay? So there you have your group of people that are not thematic in terms of the scientific area, that actually we don't have, we have 
networks, yes, but organized, we have local chapters. And the Portuguese uh, Spanish chapter organizes a lot of activities, puts the people in contact, network, so at the end, it fulfills what you are asking for, okay? It's not thematic, but it's locally oriented. Okay, one of the things that we were proposing, um, uh, I'm just going to say a, a single thing if you allow me and I need to open our uh, recommendation for the FP9 because I don't know it by heart. One of the things that we are um, proposing actually is to have this kind of mentorship, okay? Um, and the idea didn't come from us, uh, and I'm trying to find the information. Well, doesn't matter, you can go and read the statement. So, we are uh, suggesting, together with other associations, that there should be this kind of mentorship to help the people in widening countries to apply for grants. So if, for example, you have ERC grantees in the country, they could receive uh, uh, potential applicants for MSCA, uh, grants and let's say teach them, uh, give them some orientation. Okay, you managed to get it, you understood how the system works, so teach, uh, mentor the MSCA uh, uh, potential, let's say, things like that, and for other um, kind of programs. So, I mean, I think that you are not saying anything new, we know, <laughs> and we are working towards that also. Yeah, I just want to, to tell that, uh, uh, for example, Dalibor and, and me, we set up a Western Balkan group as a general interest group, and uh, we try to do something in our countries, and in some countries it's possible. You can talk with the Ministry of Science, but in some countries you can't. For example, we never got response from Ministry of Science from Macedonia and from Ministry of Science in uh, Serbia, never several emails, uh, colleagues that can uh, contact people directly, talk to them, never. So it's not easy. Even if you want to do something, it's not easy. And uh, for example, also, I went to Montenegro, I was invited by the Ministry of Science to have a best practice day. Uh, so I prepare a presentation with, uh, um, like, how to help people write uh, Maria Curie Individual Fellowship. They sent emails to 2,000 addresses. Uh, how many people came? Three. Three. So, that's it. Okay, thank you. Well, I have a question. I'm, I'm actually from Poland, but I think that under the Demari Piccari, I was counted as an Italian because I applied from Italy to go to Canada and then go back to Italy, so I'm not sure. So that, my question is, how is that really measured? Uh, are there regions within the countries that are, are doing better than others? Is this p p p taken under p p p consideration? And I'm s s s s telling you this because I come from Warsaw, and basically, I spent ten years of my life working in the in the EU projects. I never worked in a Polish project. And in Warsaw, that this is what many people do in the research centres. So that this is a question that I have. And um, I just wanted to add: um, there was a discussion, and I was uh, confused as well. Um, as far as I understand, the, the idea is that we want to have people uh, from the other countries come to these countries, right? Not necessarily returnees, because I think that, uh, that the return migration is actually in the hands of the ministries that, that deal with the diaspora policies especially that this is the case in Poland, where we have a program, 
that is financed for the researchers of the Polish origin or, or Polish researchers that are paid a lot of money to go back to Poland for three years to do research there. And this is paid by the Polish government. Plus, so this is one of the solutions that you could have, but you have to look at the diaspora policy of the given country. And it's not a research policy. Um, you asked also about ideas. So for example, me as a Marie Curie Fellow, I applied to do habilitation after my fellowship because in Poland when you get a, um, an, an, an international fellowship or you publish in English, you get m more points, like t t twice as much points as other people, let's say, so you can get your uh, tenure much easier. So that this is one of the systemic uh, solutions that we have. And of course, uh, covering the, the, the funding that um, you were talking about uh, is also present in Poland. It's been there for like 10 years. So then my other question is, is there a network, like a governmental network between these countries to talk about the best practice? Is going to answer the question? <laughs> I will give the reply on this last one. As I'm familiar, I was working for several years for the local government in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina in the Ministry of Education in my entity because I don't want to bother you. Bosnia is more complex than Belgium. If I want to do something, I have to visit 13 ministries of science to get the approval. So. Believe me, more complicated than Belgium. Uh, however, I, I'm not aware that there is a kind of intergovernmental uh, association or kind of negotiations dealing with this issue. The intergovernmental is Horizon 2020. So Horizon 2020, all of us, we are giving the money to the pot and all of us competing for this money. And for this, we are also giving some extra money, try to be better, to get this money back. So this is never ending game, but, all, well, but we are playing them. Uh, I forgot what your first question was about the going from Italy to Canada and back. This is uh, the Global Fellowship. Is that correct? So, yes, yes, yes. That's outgoing then. It was in the former Marie Curie. As an Italian. Believe me, I have even bigger problem. I have these 28 persons, I don't know them. Nobody is informing me. As an NCP in the country, as a program committee member, I don't know who are the 28 fellows here. I had to find them by case, from case to case. So this is the, the, the problem that we as NCPs are having because we would like to use these people to spread the word of mouth, to, to, to tell the experiences, to tell the others that it is a difficult, but it is possible. I'm in European projects since 1996. Immediately after the war in Bosnia, I started to work with European projects. And whoever went outside in the project, they came back with ideas how to improve their cathedral. And that is the issue. That's what I would like to see. That people are going, fetch the best practices and bring them back to my country. And therefore I said, this is the issue that each researcher individually has to understand to improve itself. And if we don't start from ourselves, we cannot force the others. So when I have the NCP event, they said, ah, it's very difficult to get the grant. Yes, it's very difficult. I'm participating in four Horizon 2020. It's very difficult. But you have to find a way. That is the point. I hope this is the explanation of your questions. Thank you so much. Um, first of all, I think that just having the widening fellowships through the European Commission as an additional tool um, 
is already beneficial because perhaps otherwise we would not be having this discussion here today. And these problems have not occurred this year or last year. There have been there for, I don't want to say forever, but for a long time. So I think that one of the solutions to really make things work or happen or better is the, whoever likes the term or not, I don't like it personally either, but you know, that's what it is, the widening fellowship. And the solutions you, you pointed out and you mentioned, um, they have to be both. They have to be bottom up and top down. There is no one way. And the bottom up, um, I, I strongly encourage and I am working with mentoring programs. I think that's one of the really, really good ideas to do that, either within Mercury or outside. And I would not give up on the diasporas. I know you've mentioned you've tried to reach out and you've had perhaps experience you know, better or worse, but the scientific diasporas are really something that um, just keep knocking. Um, and they, those are the people that can be really beneficial and they can help us through the process. And obviously the, the, the top down, if there is no governmental support, if there is no legislation funding put into the place into these people to come back, the people can be mentored as much as they can and they would love to come back, but if there are no positions, if there is no funding, they will, they don't have just the way to come back. And and just the last comment, I wanted to actually share, um, uh, I think it's, it's sort of a, I don't want to say best practice, but a good practice. Uh, I was recently asked to review um, a uh, article for the Science and Diplomacy magazine within the AAAS, and it was written by um, by Greek diaspora member in um, outside of, of Greece, and um, he mentions there an initiative that I was not aware of. It's called the Knowledge and Partnership Bridges, uh, which was um, established by the National Hellenic Research Foundation since 2017. Um, so, you know, maybe you can Google it I, if you want. I can tell you more about that, but I don't want to take uh, more of that time. But I think that this is exactly what we should look into because this is the top down. So the government puts money into an e-tool um, to basically connect with the diaspora, the Greek professionals outside of Greece, wherever they are in the world, because the article says that there are over 8 million Greek professionals outside of Greece, and that's a huge number. So um, so they are basically, they put something in place since 2017, an initiative um, that perhaps, you know, when the article comes out, you can, you can all read it, but I think this is, this is one of the ways to go forward. Thank you. Thank you, and I couldn't agree with you more about bottom-up and top-down approach. This is, the Euro, EU is giving us a framework it's only the matter of the bottom up, how to implement it from the top down, from the universities. This is why I really want to emphasize that local universities in those countries need to step up and implement this political framework. Otherwise, it won't be worth anything. So, okay, we have quick, quick question. It's not a question, it is like a standpoint of mine. Um, each widening country is facing a different situation, facing different problems that result in this uh, low ranking. But the problem uh, and the answer to the question is what should MCAA do? For me, it is analyze the situation, beg uh, each chapter, uh, address the issues that you see and do as much as possible to overcome the obstacles. Uh, many of uh, the chapters have policy groups, have different uh, working groups. They need to find their role in this uh, process. I think this is something each of us should be responsible to take any step in this regard. Um. Regarding this, what MCA can do, I will now give the closing word to Fernanda and to address our um, position paper that MCA has published last year regarding the Future Horizon Europe framework. Well, if you don't mind, I, I prefer instead of discussing the policy 
paper that uh, each of you can go and read, and it's simple because we kept it short, I would prefer to say that actually participating in this session gave me some ideas. And I think that at the level of the policy working group, we can do a lot more. And I didn't know how to do it. And uh, with your help, actually, I got a few hints of what we can do. So I think that uh, our next step is really to create a task force on, on widening. Um, and maybe we can put together a few people interested on the subject that can discuss it further and try to come up with some initiatives uh, involving then also collaborations with the, the chapters in the, the different countries that are on the widening situation. So, well, thank you from my part because I think it was really positive. I didn't know what I would get from this session and uh, I think that we will uh, be able to do a bit more in the future. Thanks. Thank you all and uh yeah, this is, I couldn't give, agree with you more, so I will not say anything else. <laughs> so make sure that you involve yourself in the policy working group.